how it all began actually was I was probably about three years old. I was in my mother's arms. We were in Kalamitia Lagoon. Uh, everybody was there. It was the bird sanctuary. They were there for the birds. And as a kid, I remember I just saw the colors in the sky. It was dawn, and you should see these lines of birds flying in and out. It was just amazing. Long time ago, um, when I was a snake collector, I had a dear friend of mine called Vicky Atukorale. He was Sri Lanka's first diver. He was Dad's friend, and uh, we used to travel around a lot with him and learnt a lot about the environment. Then I went to school and when I went, came back, Atu asked me, you know, Rani, you've been away so long, what did you learn when you were there? And what I had to tell him was, Atu, I learnt a new language in which to say what we knew about the forest and about the roof. Of course, the other thing that really prompted me, I was looking all over the place and eventually I came to the Uva. And when I came to the Uva and I was looking around, I noticed something very peculiar here. And that was that there were no large trees, because this was settled for a long time. There were no very large trees, you know, giant, mango, etc. So I started wondering why this was, because it was very poor in trees this area and then I saw the note from Governor Brownrigg to Major MacDonald in to suppress the Uber rebellion and the forestry has 12 principles uh, some of which are like you know when you go observe and record when you go and look at something how do you do that there's a thing called a formula, a physiognomic formula. You can learn how to do that. Then you do that formula. Then you come and look at your land and you do the similar exercise on your land. And then you compare the two and do a gap analysis and say, oh, I'm missing this, 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 and this. Then you begin the next stage. You go to principle two, which is understand and evaluate the species you're going to be using. So for that, we have a thing called a database. So you go to the database and you choose the species that you want for those that particular design, whether you like to attract birds or whether it's for color or whether it's for fruits, that's your choice. So then you, you become the designer and then you go on to mapping. So know your land, so you can know your land and map it out. So there's a mapping process you've got to learn. So you put all these one on top of the other on a piece of land and when you finish with the principles of analog forestry, the 12 principles, you come with a design that hopefully will be sustainable, productive, beautiful, and will sustain biodiversity into the future. In analog forestry, the final principle asks you to be creative after you've learned everything. What do you get creative with? You get creative with the forest that you're creating. And you understand the piece of land as your palette and you can understand the species that you're using as your colors and texture and you apply colors and texture to your palette and that is what you come up with as your work of art. And I will quote Ananda Kumaraswamy who says, we who call art significant, not knowing of what, are also proud to progress, not knowing whither. He summarizes the modern condition. All right, the modern condition. Degas, who is an artist and who speaks on art, says art is not what you see but it is what you make others see so if you look at both these things in terms of landscape 
and art, the more meaning you can put into what you're doing, the more creative, the more beautiful it becomes. Wherever we are on the planet, it doesn't matter. It's the ecosystem or the environment around you that sustains you, that keeps you alive, keeps you healthy, gives you food. And fundamentally, I think people must develop a sense of gratitude. You know, this is a good place to start. So I came here.